Dietrich Bonhoeffer said, the more deeply we grow into the Psalms and the more often we pray them as our own, the more simple and rich our prayer becomes. Today, we will be led by a guest speaker as we dedicate our time to God, reflecting and meditating on the Psalms. We will follow our short time of reflection with a structured time of prayer. Please feel free to connect with us in prayer either by joining our Zoom call or following along via Facebook or YouTube. The prayer session will end in approximately half an hour. If there is anything you would like us to pray for this morning, please do send us a message. In the meantime, please do welcome our guests for today as they lead us through the Psalms. Hi everyone, today I'm speaking from three Psalms of the Bible, Psalm 44, Psalm 45 and Psalm 46 and it may be useful to have your Bibles to hand during these next 10 minutes. The Psalms as a whole speak words directly to God and about God, words that any believer of any generation can speak. We find the believer's language here in relating to God in the Psalms. Praising God with a glad heart, uh, praying to God, asking God for help, and also prayers asking why and for how long. Prayers sometimes from a very heavy heart, but always prayers trusting God even when we don't understand. Prayers that, when we've shared our trials and suffering, still trust in God's goodness and justice in the final outcome. And our three Psalms today contain all of this language, the believer's language. In Psalm 44, the writer starts off and he says, we we know about your fame and your power because we were told by our ancestors only you give victory when we face battles and you do so because of your love and so we don't trust in our own strength yet right now our circumstances don't look like victory to us and they don't look like victory to the people around us who don't see victory in our lives either. We don't see it, they don't see it. You've allowed our suffering to happen, even though we've been faithful. We would understand it if we were unfaithful, but even when we've been faithful, it it doesn't look like you're with us. We've heard about the old days when you did amazing things, but what about now? What about now, Lord? It looks like You're delaying in helping us. Help us, rescue us, because we know that you love us. You know, we are to be honest with God, but not to doubt his goodness. Someone told us about God and we believed and we trusted. We, in turn, are to tell the next generation. How can they know unless they've heard. In Psalm 45, the writer says, I will speak about your fame. I feel stirred to speak about the kind of person that you are, to speak about your qualities. I'm confident, says the writer, in your power. This is the believer's language. I'm confident in your power and I'm asking you to act. I know what matters to you, truth, humility, justice. I know what you love and I know what you hate. You love everything that's good and is right, verse 7. And you hate everything that's bad and is wrong. And because of you, 
So because of this, you, this is referring to Jesus, you are set above everybody else. You're anointed with the oil of joy. I will make sure you're remembered in every generation so that you'll be praised by everybody, everyone, forever. This psalm refers to a king, which is Jesus Christ, a king whose scepter is justice. You know, the things that the kings and queens hold, the scepter, that scepter for this king, Jesus Christ, is justice. A scepter is a symbol of sovereignty. It's a symbol of royalty and power. Christ is the one who will come as king of all kings and as judge of all mankind. God is our protection and strength, it says in Psalm 46. He is the help that never goes away. Uh, the NIV version describes it as the ever-present help. An ever-present help means it's never not present. It's the help that never goes away. That's God. God's help is not that of an unreliable friend. God doesn't dip in and out. He, there's nothing flaky about him. He's constant. He is totally reliable. And therefore, when everything around us is, is changing, is shifting in a frightening way, even when all that was familiar to us is gone, as I was preparing this and even now looking at the window, there's a rainstorm outside. The troubles of life can seem like storms of incessant rain. No let up, it seems. First one thing, then the other, then the other. But even then, the writer says, we know you're with us. You are our protection. Earthquakes, storms, we know that you're with us. You are our protection. The word used is fortress, and a fortress can only protect us when we're inside it. We're not protected if we rely on our own defences. We take refuge in him. Still in Psalm 46, the writer says, you will bring wars and fighting to an end by force. By force. In verse 9 it says he breaks the bow and he shatters the spear and it will be clear to all who is to be praised, who is in control. God says to all, be still and know that I am God. Twice in this psalm, Psalm 46, the writer says, the Lord Almighty is with us. God is with us. In Matthew 28 verse 20, Jesus says, And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Christ concealed in the Old Testament. Christ revealed in the New Testament. God is with us. These Psalms speak prophetically of Jesus Christ. In Psalm 45, we have the wedding of the King and his bride, Christ coming as King for his bride, which is the church. We need to be ready. We need to be ready. How are we doing? Are we hot? Are we cold? Are we lukewarm? Psalm 46, uh, 46 speaks of, amongst other things, Christ's second coming as ultimate king and judge. The stillness towards the end of the psalm speaks of God getting the whole world's attention. The noise of wars fighting and conflict is ended by the Lord. Be still, quiet. He will have our undivided attention. 
that day will be a day of recognition and a day of reckoning. For those of you yet to do so, recognize Christ today. Put your faith and your trust in him and be ready for the reckoning. For the believer, pass on your knowledge to the next generation. Endure trouble and trust God to shape you through it. Don't let your confidence be shaken when you don't understand. He brings ultimate justice and he loves us and he's good. Like Jesus, we too are given joy to persevere, to grow in character and to have a sure hope that will not disappoint us. We will now be spending time in prayer, following the Lord's Prayer. If you're watching this live, you are able to join us on Zoom as we pray together. Otherwise, please post anything you'd like us to pray for you in the comments. God is the creator of the universe, the Alpha and Omega, the King of Kings, the Almighty. But he is also our good, good Father who loves us and wants an intimate relationship with us. Begin in prayer by calling him Father and praising his name brings us into his presence the right way, with reverence and awe, but also with intimacy and relationship. You aren't just praying to a distant, powerful king, you are praying to the loving, tender God of your heart, who knows you fully and loves you deeply. Let's pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Jesus tells us to pray God's will over our own because the ultimate goal of prayer is not to convince God of our heart, but to align it with his. Praying God's will to be done in our situation puts his agenda before our own. We desire that his will be done freely without hindrance from sin and shame. Jesus tells us to pray this way not because God needs us to do his will, but because he chooses to use us to do the work of his kingdom here and now. We should desire his will to be done and for us to not stand in the way of it. Let's pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus instructs us to pray for the provision of our needs, no matter how seemingly insignificant or mundane. We need daily bread in the sense that we need God to daily dwell with us and guide us, but also that we need literal daily bread to stay alive. Pray for both his physical and spiritual provision in your life and the lives of others. Let's pray, give us this day our daily bread. We need to regularly ask God to search our hearts and reveal our transgressions to us. We need to regularly be confessing to God and asking him to forgive us. Prayer is about cultivating a relationship with Jesus and in any relationship, part of intimacy is humility and openness. Humble, open, teachable hearts seek forgiveness when it is needed. It is our duty as Christians to portray the love of Christ to the world and this means forgiving when the world doesn't. This means forgiving those who slander you or speak against you when the world would say they don't deserve your kindness. 
Let's pray, forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Though God allows us to be tempted and tested, he is never the tempter. We lead ourselves into situations where we are tempted. Here Jesus has shown us how to pray against this and keep us from being our own worst enemy. Pray also for protection and safety as we have a real enemy who lives to attack God's people by any means. Pray as Jesus says, for deliverance from evil. Let's pray, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So let us finish as we read the last part of our Lord's Prayer together. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, thank you very much for joining us in this week's time of reflection and prayers. We look forward to seeing you again soon. God bless you.